What's up everybody, it's Dis Thunder from the Foosh, and today we're going to take a look at a very special Mezco 112 Collective 2-pack, and it is, as you can see on screen, this is the Golden Age Batman Two-Face set. I was very excited about this set when we first saw it, uh, I guess that would have been fall of last year, and then we saw it again springtime. I was not expecting to see it so soon, but I suspect it was probably intended to be like a summer con exclusive set. It, it fits that mold like the Batman Black Mask one we've had before, that kind of thing. And I'm sure some folks were a little disappointed that this wasn't the 89 Batman. Uh, that's really a video for another day. But me personally, I've needed this figure almost as long as I've needed a proper 89 Batman. If you'll indulge me, I'll happily explain. The figures in this two-pack are very lovingly based on the artwork of legendary Bat artist Dick Sprang. Mr. Sprang had a pretty lengthy career starting in the 40s through the 50s and even up until his, uh, his passing. I think the last work he did for DC was in the 90s. He teamed with another great artist, Joe Stanton, who we'll talk about later, and they did the Batman Two-Face Strikes Twice book, which feels like kind of an inspiration for this set. And along with some other very notable gentlemen like Jerry Robinson, Gene Colan, Jim Mooney, uh, Nick Cardi, even Kurt Swan for a little bit, they created this sort of house style where this is the look of Batman in all forms of media for about 15, almost 20 years. To that point, you may have heard some reviewers refer to this as a 1960s Batman, and you might have rolled your eyes, but the truth is that's not entirely inaccurate because this costume was still in print up until about 1964. And even further illustrate that, there is screen test footage of Adam West wearing a costume very much like this one for the 66 Batman series. This look didn't die with the 60s, though. This instead became the Earth 2 Batman look, who was actually a different character from the mainline continuity Batman. And his story was told by Joe Stanton and some others with some beautiful artwork uh, through Brave and the Bold and All-Star Squadron. I don't wish to spoil him, but he had a pretty interesting life. He got married, had a kid, oh, lots of stuff that I don't want to say here if you haven't read it. And I feel like this work inspired another favorite of mine, John Byrne, and his Batman Captain America and Superman Batman Generations books of the late 90s. And if you happen to be a Silver Age fan and you haven't read them, I do strongly recommend them. With some backstory out of the way, let's join Batman in the cave here and talk about his accessories. He comes with three free Batarangs, as in they're not attached to anything, uh, one of which is telescoping. He has another Batarang with the bat rope attached and the bat bolas. Uh, which he actually has that and the bat rope also with a wire attached instead of the string. Being this is the Batman of the Silver Age, these batarangs can be used for just about anything you can think of. He had one for every occasion. Worthy of special attention is the rebreather, which attaches to the stoic masks with uh, a small magnet and a pretty good form fit. I did notice still doing the review that actually says oxygen on the front of the mask. This would no doubt come in handy in any inhospitable environment, but I think it might be useful in the Batcopter if he wants to fly at higher altitude. Joining him at the very pre-personal computer era Batcomputer, we can take a closer look at the unmasked head and cowl piece. And this head was met with some contention online when it was first shown off, and I can kind of see why. It's certainly different than most Mezco heads we've received, but again, once you know the source material, everything kind of makes sense. And the more you look at it, the more you start to love that ridiculous chin. The cowl neck piece actually really impressed me. It was even better than I would have expected. And it looks great around his neck, but I especially like it like this uh, with it in his hands. It actually drapes really well and has a good kind of contemplative moody feel when he's looking down at it like this. I like this look so much, I'm worried I might have to find a period appropriate suit and jacket for a Bruce Wayne figure. Let's take a look at those mastheads in a little bit more detail. So from left to right, you have a smirking, not quite a full smile face, and then the angry one on the far right. The two in the middle, um, they're kind of hard to discern when they're on the figure. So I assume putting them side by side would help with that. And it actually does. I can tell much better the difference now. And again, these two, I think, are the ones that are intended for the bat rebreather. And while I appreciate how subtle that is between the two of them, one kind of almost a smile and one more of a frown, I can't help but wish maybe we had a full toothy grin head to go with this set, just because this is a Batman who does smile on occasion. It's worth noting that the neck attachment and the head depths of these figures are different from other Mezco Batmans, so head swaps not really an option. Moving over to the optional hands, we have a fist, a grip hand, uh, like a flight or a chop hand, and a splayed hand for each side. The blue matches the gauntlets perfectly, but hides a little bit of sculpt detail. 
So the grip hands are obviously my favorite, but I want to point out they actually have a notch cutout on the index finger for trigger hands. This Batman doesn't come with any triggered weapons, but it's great to have the option. And then lastly, maybe my favorite accessory is the bat communicator hidden in the buckle of the utility belt. I'm trying to get a detail shot in there. It is fully painted and it actually clips in there very securely. I almost didn't know it was there when I first got the figure. Moving over to articulation, I don't think this is a body we've seen before, though it bears some structural similarity to the Christopher Reeve Superman. So that being the case, I don't believe it has butterfly joints on the shoulders, but it does have double elbows with a pretty tight bend, bicep cuts, and gauntlet and wrist articulation. The torso articulation is very similar to the Reeve Superman. It has a very good range forward, a pretty good range back, and there is, of course, swivel at the rib cage and at the waist joint. The hips allow for a really good 90 degree bend forward, not as much out, but the double knee makes up for that for being a super tight bend. And the boot articulation is some of the best I've seen so far. The neck has the double barbell, but just at the top of the neck, not inside the torso. But I think it all works together really well and gives this Batman an immense amount of personality. So I forgot that I already went over hands. So I'm going to use this video time as an excuse to talk about his build because I think it surprised folks when we first saw the figure. We're used to our Mezco Batman being a lot bulkier than this. But like I said before, if you know the source material, that rangy barrel chest kind of slim leg build is perfect for a Batman of this era. Let's talk about this cape. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a wire cape guy. But before you unsubscribe, uh, I'm going to make an exception for this one. The blue pleather on the outside and the suede on the inside, not only is it a great color match, but it actually has like a quality feel to it when you handle it. There are five posing wires inside that cape and they allow for something like this uh, cloaked look that's not really common for the Golden Age, but still looks awesome. But where the wire comes into play big time is when you do anything dynamic with it. I think the combination of the color and just how well it moves and holds kind of made a believer out of me. It really brings this thing to life when you're posing it. And I bring up how many wires are in the cape because I feel like it's like the magic number. It's just enough to allow for articulation, but it also makes it not terrible to fold it back over his shoulders in a neutral pose. You don't have to fight with it like uh, some other capes I've done where they have wire through the entire thing, like on each spline. So as far as wired capes go, it really feels like the best of both worlds. So next up, we're going to talk size comparisons. And I was actually thinking about doing a segment in this video about the different attempts previous companies have made at making a Golden Age Batman figure. Because in actuality, uh, Kenner tried a couple times, ha Hasbro tried, DC Direct, and then of course Mattel at the very end. And some of them are pretty good. But I feel like this video is running kind of long anyway, so if that's of interest to y'all, let me know in the comments or something. Uh, maybe I can do a spin-off video on that. So for starters, here is the Black Series TIE Fighter pilot, because I still can't find my Stormtrooper. This is a pretty good visual representation of that six and a half inch tall stature this figure has. Of course, I'm hardly the first one to put these two figures together, but here is the Reeve Superman figure, and like most have noticed, the build and the style of the costume actually complement really well. This figure wouldn't be a bad starting point for a Golden Age Superman variant. Next, here's my attempt at like a John Byrne style Superman, but he's just way too cut to go with this figure properly. Then of course we've got Supreme Knight Batman, and really you couldn't have two more different figures in your collection. And while Supreme Knight of course is still my favorite figure, gold medal all the way, this Golden Age Batman is very much silver medal. It surprised me how close they were in terms of height, although the builds are super different. But it, like if you look at where the belts line up there, they're actually pretty close proportion-wise. Go figure. And lastly, I've got the DC Direct Crisis on Infinite Earths Earth 2 Robin figure. I forgot I own this figure. I forgot how great this figure looks. And I really like the way these two look together. I don't know how many Robins Mezco plans to do, but we gotta have a Golden Age Robin of some kind to go with this Batman. It's funny, I actually found this Earth 2 Robin when I was looking for my DC Universe Classics Robin, uh, the classic variant figure, which I'm pretty sure I own. I don't know what the hell happened to it, so you'll have to accept my Earth Stats quick custom, you know, for now. But I really do think Mezco could pull this off. They could make something that would work with this well. I mean, think of the variant head options. You could have Golden Age, you could have uh, 80s Dick Grayson, you could have Jason Todd. It could work. 
I should mention that Earth 2 Robin also has a second costume that he wore that's a lot more like this Golden Age costume that has an R on the bat symbol and the domino mask. Some people really like that costume and might even want a figure, but those people are wrong. And of course, we have to bring in the figure that actually comes with him in the two-pack, classic Two-Face. There's a couple things about this figure, let's just get out of the way right now. Number one, he does share the same body as the modern Two-Face figure, which really isn't a bad thing, other than the uh, single elbows. But with a suited body, it, it's not the worst thing. And for gun holding, I think it works pretty good for this figure. And secondly, because Warner Brothers is stupid, he did not come with guns. But luckily, Mattel offered an accessory pack full of Tommy guns and revolvers and double barrel shotguns to fix that problem. So the big differences on this figure are, of course, the suit and the head sculpts. And I have to tell you, I really like the red and black of the modern, but this checkered purple and orange suit that he's wearing on the classic figure is just striking as all hell. I really like it. In fact, if you had missed out on this modern Two-Face and you were only able to get this two-pack, I don't feel like you're missing out much at all. And depending on when you start reading comics, you might prefer him with that classic green scarred face as opposed to the red anyway. If you do own that previous Two-Face, or you own Netflix Punisher, or even John Wick, you have a pretty good idea of what this body can do. It's not bad. Like I said, the single elbows are probably the biggest offender, but it holds a pretty good silhouette, looks good with the jacket on, and it can hit most poses pretty well. It feels quality at least, which is always a good thing. And like Modern Two-Face, I do feel like this body has received some upgrade um, since they used it for Netflix Punisher. I also really like the belt and the shoe details. Likewise, you'll recognize the hands he comes with, uh, only difference being he now wears gloves on both sides to match the jacket. He comes with two very necessary and not at all inappropriate trigger fingers. I have him here, of course, with the right hand for the trigger grip and then a support hand on the left. We see a return of those coin holding hands. He has a couple flipping hands. He has a couple where it lands on the top of his palm. Try to get a little detail. They actually did sculpt the face of the coins on these like they did on the original Two-Face. And I think I mentioned it then, but I really like that they did this because I am so gonna lose the coins he comes with. So at least I'll have some options left. I think the one where he's rolling it between his fingers is still my favorite. One thing that I'm really liking about this Two-Face already that may not have occurred to everybody else yet is when we get that Dick Tracy two-pack, which to my knowledge hasn't been solicited yet, he is going to look amazing getting all chummy with flat top. One of the accessories that I wasn't expecting is an option for an unscarred Harvey Dent alternate head. In fact, when the modern one came with one, I liked it so much I made him an extra suited body just to keep it on. I think it's interesting that if you look at them side by side, the facial structures seem kind of similar. It's mostly just the eyes and the hairstyle that are changed. And that's actually a good way in general to make a figure look more golden age. It's also nice to see a return of his coins, his coin flipping effects, and his extra knives for accessories. Since we had to buy the gun separately, it's nice to have those options. But there is some new stuff as well. He comes with this very nice distressed and worn looking suitcase that contains dynamite and a timer. It's very period appropriate. Looks like it fell right out of a Saturday matinee cereal. You know, looking at these two in their shirts and ties here, I can't help but notice just how good that classic suit looks. It looks like it walked right off the page of the comic books. I almost forgot, there's one more variant head. This one's just a more closed mouth version of the one that's on him currently. I think I like the gritted teeth better. Let's swing back around to that Double Trouble accessory pack for a second because I have to talk about how great these money bags are. You get two of them, you have a little foam in there to fill them out. If one were so inclined though, you could take the foam out of there and put these coins in there instead. Uh, doesn't matter, those came with John Wick as well. I think it's great reuse and I'll take more of them. I realize that reuse across different figures like that pisses some people off, but honestly, as long as it makes sense and it adds to the value, I've got no problem with it. And that totally seamlessly brings me around to these fighting effects. You get a straight and a curved one. These are, of course, the same ones that we got with the advent calendar last Christmas. And I'm sorry to say, I have gotten no better with them. I still don't quite know how to use them in my photography. Oh, they also come with the little pow effects that will slide on there, which I am also terrible at. And like I said, I've seen other people do neat stuff with them. So while they're not maybe the most useful for me, I don't begrudge their inclusion in the slightest. 
One thing I am pretty good at incorporating though is loadouts. So we're gonna pivot back one more time to the Double Trouble accessory pack, talk about what guns go best with Two-Face. And obviously the M1928 Thompson is the first and foremost go-to with its drum magazine, cuts compensator, and angled foregrip. For his secondary, I like this breech action sawed off shotgun he's got with the dual barrel and working breech. But that little 38 Special Revolver would work as well in a pinch. The only one I wouldn't use with the classic Two-Face is that Double Barrel 1911, because those came a lot later. So as I kind of collect my final thoughts here to round out the video, there's one thing been kind of dogging me since I started this review. Because I usually tell you guys whether I recommend something. And of course, yeah, duh, I highly recommend this set. I, I think this set is amazing. This is their best two-pack so far. This is awesome stuff. But it's also a bit of Pandora's box. Because as soon as I opened this set, I started thinking, ooh, well, I hope that Dick Tracy gets announced soon. And ooh, I'm going to need a Golden Age Robin. Oh, I definitely need a Golden Age Superman. Going to need a Golden Age Joker. Going to need a Golden Age Flash. He'd look good with these guys. Hell, we could do some Silver Age. I could do a Silver Age Green Lantern. What about a 66 Batman with the Yellow Oval? Oh, and maybe I need to go back and get Popeye now? I got to do this? I think it's safe to say that means it's a job well done for old Mezco Toys. Uh, thank you, as always, to you guys for helping me get my hands on one. And thanks to y'all, the watchers, for watching the video. That was like 16 minutes. Appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.